Good morning. Today we're going to uh, do a basic message on salvation and then go into right division. On our website, gracewithyou.org, there'll be a handout of what I'm referring to this morning. And it's the basic gospel. If you take your Bibles and you turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Uh, people, Oprah has guessed on what is the will of God in your life. If you want to know what the will of God in your life is, it's found in this verse. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Basic will of God today on this sin-cursed world. We, we're looking at it, and you can't watch the news without saying everything is just all messed up. Because it's the God, little G-O-D, that is running this world, Satan. But what's the will of God have you saved in this sin-cursed world? In Galatians it says, he delivered us out of this sin-cursed world. So... Several places in what we call the Pauline epistles, the books after the New Testament, from Romans to Philemon, you'll find the gospel. One place where it's at is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4. And it's a decision you make. Basically, you have a sin problem. You sin. You were born, and you, by your parents' instruction, you are born to get into trouble. You are born to cause offense to God. You have a sin problem, and you need to get it forgiven. And here we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 3, it says, For I delivered unto you, First of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Believing that Christ died for our sins, you kind of turn that around. Well, did he die for my sins? Well, he died for all your sins. And by trusting in that statement, you're eternally connected to God forever in the heavenly places. If you reject that, and not our purpose this morning on the handout, there's dire consequences because you go down to hell to pay for the sins you made while walking on the planet. It's a decision about what you're trusting in. It's a decision about what you're trusting in. And when that happens, uh, we had a series called The Operation of God. When you make that decision, you move God to do things. You, you on the earth, making the decision to trust that the Lord Jesus Christ paid for that sin, cause God to move. People don't realize what he does for you when you make that decision. We don't want him to do all that. We want him to give us some random numbers that when we buy a little ticket, we can get a lottery, or or we want him to take vengeance on an enemy, or we want him to make our life easy peasy, right? But let's see what he is doing. And what he is doing is found in this book. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Now you've... Uh, in the chart, you made that decision. And it says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom, whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And you didn't even know it, right? Don't feel it. It's not a cold chill down your back. Fingers don't curl. And in my own situation, um, someone um, in the military gave me the gospel 
of the grace of God. And I couldn't believe it because it's too simple. It is too simple to get saved. Couldn't believe it was that simple. And what part of the gospel wasn't in there? My good deeds, right? You think about yourself. You're involved in it somehow. (laughs) And you get in this book, and you finally come to that realization. It's Jesus Christ alone, faith in the blood alone, what he did alone. You're not involved. All you can see is what he did, and you're trusting in that to get your sins forgiven. The gospel. And then after that, we're looking at this, that this operation of God in the background. You're moving God. Send his Holy Spirit to put that in you to help you understand what he wants you to do now. We started off this message with 1 Timothy 2, 4, the will of God who have all men to be saved. When you get saved, the rest of the verse says, come unto the knowledge of the truth. The will of God, saved, come unto the knowledge. Come unto the knowledge. Uh, while we're here, go up with me to verse 3 in Ephesians chapter 1. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, Have you ever gotten a gift wrapped in a package and you wonder what's in it? So what are all these blessings? Well, that's what the book is for. You've got to open it up and find out what blessings are there. As as, uh, they say, I'm on the back nine of life. Well, is there a blessing in that, finally approaching that, uh, that graveyard? Well... One of the blessings is you really don't have to worry about death. You have to worry about the pain of death, but that event, when you get into this book and you open up that package of all spiritual blessings, you understand death is an, an enemy. It's a day of rejoicing for you. Sure, you want, don't want to leave your loved ones behind, but as Paul says, that he would rather be with the Lord but it was mindful for him to stay with the Philippians so to give them help in unwrapping these gifts that he's given us while we're walking in this sin-cursed world. And that, that's what it is. You make a decision to trust that Christ died for your sins and rose again the third day, and now you want to get the knowledge. Now, turn with me to... Um, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Very interesting verse. And it says, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. So Paul says, he tells this church, Timothy's the pastor. Consider what I say. Well, it's as we learn, it's really not Paul saying. It's God himself saying it. But he gave specific instructions to the Apostle Paul. And people miss it. People miss it. I read this on the Internet, and we know it must be true. It said the World Factbook gives the world population as 7 billion 21, 7 billion, 21 million, 936,029 people as of July 2012. And the distribution of religion as Christian, 33.39%. And they divide Christian down to Roman Catholic, 16.85%. Protestant to 6 point one five percent orthodox three point nine six american whatever it is one point two six then the next group is muslim twenty three point two percent hindu thirteen point eight percent buddhist six point seven seven percent shila 
S I K H, and then Jewish, then Baha, and other religion athe atheists come in at two percent. So all, we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. We're supposed to come unto the knowledge of truth, but if you um, turn back with me to Genesis chapter 16, Genesis chapter 16. And one of these groupings bases their whole religion off these verses. So we're open the same gift box, but they're pulling out something not to them, not about them. Now look at Genesis chapter 16. Let's look at verse 9. And it says, and this is, and it says, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered by, for the multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael. The Lord has heard thy affliction, and he shall be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Again, that's the beginning of the roots of Islam. Islam, the religion of submission. Islam does not mean peace. Islam means submission. So, using this book, they claim the roots are from God, and they base their whole religion on that. How about uh, another major group? Let's look at Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And look at verse 19. And he's talking to Peter. And he says in Matthew 16, 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What religion bases their foundation on that verse? Roman Catholic, 16% of the world. Um... Let's let's turn to Acts chapter two. Acts chapter two. Same book. Acts chapter two. Look at verse thirty seven, please. Just telling Israel you crucified the Messiah, the Christ. And they said, in verse 37, Now when, the, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what should we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises is unto you and to your children, and all that are far off, even as many as are in the, Lord, in the Lord, our God shall call. And again, people base their whole religion on that verse. Now, with us, they claim we base what we believe on one verse. And which one would that be? Second Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen. Acts 2, the Baptist? Yes, Acts two are the Baptists and okay. and the Pentecostals. And in Second Timothy two fifteen, it says. 
Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Is that all you got? And it isn't. Believe me, that's just one verse about why you should rightly divide the word of truth. Now, in the weeks to come, you know, understanding the mystery of Christ revealed to... How do we start this lesson? Consider what I say. That's consider what Paul says. And where did he get his instruction? The Lord Jesus Christ. On the earth while he's walking around? No. No. The risen Christ gave Paul. And he says, consider what I say. And what I say is from the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, um, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Well, when you consider what Paul says, things like bap the controversy over baptism, it just disappears. Faith and works disappear. There are no works. Sign gifts disappear. The question of salvation disappears. The understanding what God's will is, I don't understand what God wants me to do in my life, it disappears. Tongues, you understand why they disappear. By rightly dividing the word of two. Our Lord Jesus Christ instructs us to identify Paul as our pattern. We won't turn with those, but the three verses are 1 Timothy 1.16, 1 Corinthians 6.16, and 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. A failure to operate according to the Lord's revelations to the Apostle Paul leads to frustration, understanding, confusion, and makes your walk in Christ an utter shipwreck. And your understanding about giving to the church, you'll understand how prayer operates. You'll understand communion, the Great Commission, confessions of sin, and how that all relates. It, it's a wonderful gift to understand what God is doing today and how we are to walk in it. And that's why Paul says, consider what I say. When you approach the, uh, people in your day-to-day -day walk, they have to consider what Paul says. He wrote 13 books of the Bible. You might want to consider that he's the apostle to the Gentiles, were the Gentiles, and what he has to say, how God is operating today. Um, I wanted to go 20 minutes. I, I just want to close, and we'll pick this up next time with um, Romans 16.25.